The medicine wheel is an ancient symbol that teaches us how to live in harmony with the environment, our community, and ourselves. It helps us understand the interconnectedness of all things and find balance and purpose in life. Stay tuned for a deep dive with Carrie Hummingbird. Welcome to Exploring the Mystical Side of Life with your host, Linda Lang. Hi, this is Linda Lang from ThoughtChange.com. We are exploring the mystical side of life once again this week. If you enjoy our conversations, remember to subscribe, share with a friend. Today, we are talking Medicine Wheel with Carrie Hummingbird, the Medicine Woman. Welcome, Carrie. Oh, thanks for having me back on the show, Linda. I always enjoy connecting with you and your audience. Well, you know, I have goosebumps even just introducing you, Carrie. I loved our first episode, so I'll put the link in the show notes to that. But I'm really excited to jump into the medicine wheel. So can you tell me a little bit about your qualifications to talk about the medicine wheel? Oh, that's a really good question. Yes, because, you know, we want to always address the uh, question of appropriation, you know, when we're talking about Indigenous things. And this is an Indigenous teaching. So Indigenously, um, I am part Cherokee, and um, I've been trained in Indigenous practices, not by the Cherokee, but by by the Peruvians and uh, the Caro shamans, and also by the Wixotica in Mexico, which are also called the Huichol. So some people that read Carlos Castaneda's books might be aware of the indigenous people he studied with. So I have, you know, I have like official training, you know, from people that are indigenous. But beyond that, I do, I do want to say that there's some things I share in my new book, Inner Medicine, that Mother Earth has specifically shared with me. She's like, darling, everyone needs to come back to me now. Everybody needs to come back to me now and connect with me and be taught the ways of connecting with me and creating their own magical realities. And so nobody owns any practices. Now this is really difficult because we have indigenous people around the world and especially in North America, because I live in North America, who have been really just horribly treated. I mean, it's, it's beyond horrible. There's really no word to describe how devastating the abuse has been towards indigenous people on this continent and in South America as well and around the world. And so some of these indigenous practices are the only thing that, that some of these indigenous tribes have left after generations and generations and generations of colonization into Western mindsets. And anybody watching the news would see that they have uncovered the bodies of children that were indigenous children stolen from their families in the, these Christian schools and then killed and then put in mass graves. And now the Pope finally acknowledging this abuse that's been happening to indigenous people. But that abuse is still happening today. I mean, there are Christian churches, fundamentalist churches that even so much as told my son that he would have to stop talking with his mother because I practice shamanism. I practice indigenous ways of connecting with Mother Earth. And so I'm going straight to hell. And so he has to stop talking to me. I mean, that kind of languaging is still alive today. And you would think that that would be a thing of the past given the revealing of all the abuse of Christianity towards indigenous people, but it's still there. So when we talk about indigenous practices like the medicine wheel, it comes with all of this context. And the context I want to wrap around it is not a victim story. The context I want to wrap around this is that indigenous people have been warriors of Mother Earth love. They have been warriors of love to hold the tradition sacred over generations of abuse and to hold that medicine strong and sacred through all of this tumultuousness caused by colonization and white supremacy on the planet. And now that it's finally, the consciousness has turned the corner, so to speak, to where, you know, these little pockets of fundamentalists, like I mentioned, are smaller and smaller and smaller, even though they have loud voices. It's like finally safe enough for indigenous people to say, hey, that was very painful. And our ancestors have been strong, but they have suffered and we need some restitution. So in the midst of all of that, Mother Earth says, yes, and 
these are my warriors of love and they knew this was the deal and they're here to hold space for their very perpetrators to now learn the error of the ways and come back to mother earth so it's like wow can you imagine what an amazingly huge soul assignment to be part of a lineage that has been so abused and held this medicine so sacredly and then to turn around and offer it to the very people's descendants who perpetrated against your people. Wow. That's really the space we're in right now. That is the space we're in. And so many people are searching. They have that lack that is not feeding their spirit. They're missing something. They know that. And so many people are returning back to indigenous ways in order to fill that gap. So in your opinion, do you think that working with the medicine wheel is perhaps the most effective way of connecting our spirits back in or plugging back into Mother Earth? I absolutely do. And I'll just preface that by saying that throughout my life, I always wanted to be in nature. So I was always a nature lover. So I was always going on hikes in nature. I was doing artwork and, and, and capturing the scene in nature. And I was really immersing in the landscape. I would travel all over and do artwork in different landscapes and be, be in the environment. And that helped me feel better, but that wasn't what I'm experiencing with the medicine wheel. So it's kind of like the medicine wheel opens up this other reality for you where you realize that everything on the planet is alive and has consciousness so when you're working with the medicine wheel when you're working with the four directions what you're doing is you're calling in sacred space for yourself and your family and wherever else you're opening sacred space that sacred space creates like this what i like, like kind of a magical bubble where you start experiencing a completely different reality than everybody around you. It's like, it's not even the same reality. It's very different. And of course, the blessing of that is we know like what our Western reality is so cold and sterile oftentimes and devoid of emotion and, and like numb and distracted and all those things. And then here comes this sacred space that opens up this bubble of presence and wonderment and like, synchronicity and oh my goodness like she's alive you know it's like that it's like the planet is alive that's really what the sacred space opens up and so when you when you find yourself at this spot of like i'm really feeling called to mother earth medicine but i'd want to be honoring of indigenous people and somehow because of what they've been through as a maybe a white presenting person i don't feel like i deserve it or I don't feel worthy of it, or I don't feel like I can ask for that, or I don't feel like I can connect. That's why Mother Earth is telling me to tell you very strongly, oh, you heard the message correctly and get over yourself. And yeah, you need to connect with Mother Earth. And so find a teacher, find somebody willing to teach you. That's the main thing. Don't expect somebody to teach you who's wounded and upset and it hasn't processed that yet. Find people who will teach you. And that's one of the reasons why my Cherokee ancestors beyond the veil, they led me down to South America to study with the Caro because Q possibly ERO, that's the name of their tribe, in the Andes Mountains with the rainbow ponchos and everything, they remember themselves as Star Nations people. They remember themselves as on the planet to protect and honor the sacred traditions until humanity woke up. They pass that knowledge down through generations and generations and generations because they remember who they are. So they've managed through all of their torment they have managed to have moon eye, to have unconditional love as part of their daily practice. Wow, these people are incredible. They're master teachers. So go study. You know, it's like I, I went down to study with them because they're amazing. So yeah, and find somebody, study with me, study with anybody who's willing to teach you and then leave these other people alone. Like if they're still really wounded and just let them be, let them be, let them sort themselves out, you know, and just let it alone. Carrie, can you explain the medicine wheel for us and the different quadrants? Absolutely. So the medicine wheel is, first of all, we're shifting out of linear thinking. Western thinking is very linear, like one, two, three, four, five in a straight line is going to get you. And now we're going into cycles. So we're going circular learning. And, and it's an equality-based um, system. So like 
every single quadrant is equal to the next quadrant. Like there's no supremacy. <laughs> there's no like better quadrant, right? A lot of people have like their bodies down here and then there's linear all the way up to their soul and, and there's high spirit and that's, oh, they wanna focus on their high spirit and neglect their body because it's a line, right? It's that white supremacist thinking. And it's like, no, 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 it's a circle. So your body is just as important as your spirit. So we start in the South, I start in the South and many traditions start in the East. I start in the South because that's when you wake up as a Western person, you wake up in the South and you go, what's going on in my life? Oh my God. And the South can be a wake up call. And the South is here to get you in your body. Like get in your body, remember yourself as human, feel your emotions and feel your sensations and stop being so numb. The South is here to open our hearts, open our minds and connect us back with sort of the grid of mother earth. That's the South. So she's like the one that goes under your bare feet and just connects you with mother earth and opens your heart and opens your mind and helps you be aware of what's going on. And so just take a moment and let the South meet you just right even right here. Just let the South wrap you up in her love and her coils of light. Just woo, welcome South. We love you. Woo. The South is like so loving <sighs> for all the wayward children. You said something really rather profound, I think. Something that so many spiritual people maybe don't practice. And that is that our body is as important as all the other parts of us. That the body is equally important. So that's what the South is like here to remind you, you know, your body is your vessel for your mother earth journey and your body's made of mother earth. And so just think about that for a second. Your body's made of mother earth connected with the planet. That's how the planet's teaching you is through your body. So you ignore it at your peril because that, you know, you need to pay attention to all the nuances and then you really get acquainted and, and with your body because your mother is teaching you right through your body. Beautiful, beautiful, thank you. Yeah, so South, we love you. And then the next direction is the West and the West is equated in, you know, all of these directions have animal allies that are also um, wound around inside of them and from the traditions that I practice, the South is such a mama because that's your Kundalini energy. So you want the Kundalini to rise up your spine and flood your brain with all of those um, high frequencies because that helps you shift your consciousness, right? Out of the sort of like um, matrix living and thinking into this trance state that reveals the mystery. Like, wow, you know, you want that to happen. So that's why sexuality is so important. And that's why you need to explore that you know, and get yourself into those heightened states because that helps to open up this brain access. So Sachamama serpent is that first ally. And in the West, the ally is Jaguar. So the ally in the West is helping you to like, think about Jaguar, like pacing through the woods, like tracking, noticing, witnessing everything that's going on inside of you, the witness, like, whoa, look at all of this territory. I got ancestral stuff. I've got, you know, like, <laughs> I've got past lives. I've got all this content. I've got emotions. The Jaguar is very emotional with it, working with the emotional and the mental brains. And it's like, wow. And the West is about releasing all the stuff that doesn't serve, which is probably half the stuff that came out of your mouth up until you woke up. Right? Like, we... <laughs> at least, at least. <laughs> so like, until we wake up, we use our word unconsciously. And then we start creating all these webs of reality for ourselves. And we get to experience that. And some of that's painful. And so Jaguar comes in and says, let's just swat that whole web down, just and just put that down to the ground, you know? So the West is really about the spirit of death, working with the cycles of death and renewal and releasing what you created. Like even what you created that you love so much, because if you love it so much and you cling to it, then nothing new can come in. So it's like that, you know, the releasing of what no longer serves. And so when you see the West, and you feel like this is welcome West to just make yourself known. West is so powerful, but it's so vulnerable because it knows it's your deepest truth in your heart and it's not gonna let you live fake. And it just comes in to liberate you from all that fakeness, that, that falseness, the conditioning. And it's a little ruthless about it, but it's also really gentle and 
super compassionate. So if you can feel that energy, everybody, just like let West, wow, <sighs> come in and see you fully as you are. Thank you, West. Powerful medicine. I love the West, one of my favorite directions. <sighs> so, and then we move into the North. And the North is that place of deep winter, that place where we're around the campfire with our ancestors. And we are the ancestors, like the ancient ones around the campfire telling stories. And if you just thought of like that image, that's what our lifetimes are. You know, we're sitting around the campfire, we're having all these amazing stories. And of course, we're the sum of all the stories ever told by all of our ancestors. They live on in our DNA, in our bones, in our teeth. And when we go into the North, we're really aware of our bones, our skeleton, our, our skull, you know, the, the densest parts of us that are the memory of our ancestry and the memory of therefore our lives because we reincarnate through family lines over and over again. It's like the magic of that. And so we bring in hummingbird as the ally because hummingbird is fearless. Hummingbird can travel outside of time. Hummingbird is timeless. I mean, how does hummingbird make that? I mean, it's just a tiny little bird. How does it make that huge journey not knowing where its next meal is? It's because it's totally tapped in to Mother Earth and goes exactly to all the synchronistic places it's guided and it gets its meal and it gets to spend the night and it, and it makes this tremendous journey on a wing and a prayer, basically. That's through the power of the soul, right? Through soul connection, the larger you. That multidimensional you comes in in the north and it's the one that's telling the story that you're living right now. So it's that that larger self, who am I in truth and love, as Paul Selig says, you know, I know who I am in truth and love. That's that message for the North. And all of our ancestors are in our bones and they're right here with us supporting us. So take a moment and just feel the support of the North and all of your ancestors, like just surrounding you and just so cheering you on as you are the one that's in the grand relay of life, piercing the veil of Homo Luminous. Wow. You are the honored, cherished one that gets to do that. It's so amazing. I just feel that, feel that for a moment. Your ancestors all around you and, and the North guiding you in your storytelling. And you realize, I have a lot to learn about how to tell stories. And the North is here to help you around that campfire, tell better stories for humanity and for yourself. So that's the North. I love the North and it's, uh, it's a going inside, you know, it's that inwards journey. It can be a dark journey, but it also in the darkness can be this amazing light. You know, when you close your eyes and you take a shamanic journey and you, you cut out all the light, that's so you can see better, right? Absolutely. That's that nighttime, that's, that's that darkness illuminated. So that's the North. And then we move into the East and the East is the new dawn, the new day, the new potentials, the sunrise. The sun is rising in the East. We don't know what's gonna happen. It, and if we do, we're kind of making it up from our egos. So we're kind of like in this um, cosmic womb. I love that word, cosmic womb. We enter the cosmic womb and then the sun starts to rise and we wake up and we go, oh, wonder what's gonna be here today. Oh my goodness, it's so exciting. That is the eagle and the condor because they're flying with the timeless self and it's beyond this fear of, is there gonna be tomorrow? Because you know there is, <laughs> like there is an endless tomorrow, right? Because there's an endless timeless now. And it's just, what do you wanna to create today? What do you wanna to create tomorrow? What do you wanna create in the future? And when you fly with the eagle and the condor, you, your heart really opens then. I've, I've had some amazing healings with condor in my heart. It's like, wow. When you fly up really high, you can see the horizon, right? You can see all the details down, down, you know, on the ground. You can see the little insect, you know, they hunt from way up there, but they can also see the whole picture. That's the beauty of the East. It's like you get this vantage point that's so much bigger than your human life, but you're also able to be down in the nitty gritty details of your human life, both at the same time. And it's the energy. It's just flying, it's soaring with your soul and with all of creation, the great spirit. So that's, that's the beauty of the East and it's the unknown, it's the mystery. And we learn to embrace the mystery. A lot of us see mystery and we go, I don't like that because the mystery has been scary up until now or bad things happened or surprised me in a bad way and I don't like it. But like, 
what if mystery returned to be like Christmas morning, you know, for those of you who had Christmas morning or like some birthday celebration or something where like the presents were right there and that excitement, that anticipation of like, what's inside my gifts? And what if like every day we lived like that into the mystery, like not knowing what was inside? That would be a beautiful way to live. That would be a life filled with magic and wonder and awe. And so the last things, Linda, are with the medicine wheel is that, you know, we do the four directions, but then we also have earth and sky. So those are the last pieces, right? Uh, Because we make a little box for ourselves in a way. And so when we call in sacred space, we're calling in the four directions and then the floor and the ceiling. And we're creating like this little bubble of protection and also magical space where anything could happen, working with the consciousness of earth. And when you call in mother earth, you know, everybody has their own ways, but the indigenous, we call in all of our relations all of our relations, the the stone people, the plant people, the animals, the birds, the fish, the elements, everything alive on the planet, the ants even, all of life on earth is like essential for our own survival and our own enjoyment of this planet. We call them all in. And when we go to the sky, we call in the high councils and we call in the galactics, right? We call in all the stars and the star beings and, and anything else you want to call in, the light of the moon, the sun, you know, whatever's in the sky. And, and then of course the whole thing is the oneness, whatever word you have to express the oneness. So that's, that's sacred space. I, not, um, I've been doing this ever since I started calling in sacred space, my life got better. So every time we call in sacred space, we are actually opening a medicine wheel. Yes. Every time. And then of course they have like actual medicine wheels on the ground, right? Where you can stand in those spaces and, and commune in a tangible way. But yes, just by calling it in, you're calling in, you're invoking the medicine wheel in your life. Like it's around you. It's like a rotating medicine wheel all around your body. You know, we know in the world of energy, there is no such thing as kind of time and space and all things exist. So in actuality, the medicine wheel is around us all the time. We're just not tapping into it, right? Exactly. And because if you guys have noticed this universe is very gracious and respectful. And so that's why you need to keep inviting. So when we open sacred space, all we're doing is reinitiating the desire. Yes, I want support. Yes, I'd like to open up this mystery. Yes, I I welcome these consciousness beings that hold down earth reality to support me, right? So the north, the south, the west, and the east, they're not just like directions on a map, they're conscious beings that support us in having this experience of being physical. And so you're calling on these archetypal forces in earth consciousness that hold open this entire matrix. You're calling on the backbone, you know, and saying, hey, (laughs) little ant over here needs some help, right? (laughs) Why is it so important that we live this way or that we return to living this way? Well, because when we get tapped back in to Mother Earth consciousness, we remember ourselves as a cell in the body of Mother Earth. And if you notice, like um, when, like for example, we had never met before a few years ago. And as soon as we met, we both knew the same things. It wasn't like we had to study with the same teachers or even had the same path. But we had a conversation instantly. We hardly even needed to acquaint each other. And we just knew, here we are, right? That's because we're tapped in as remembering ourselves as a cell of Mother Earth. So the medicine wheel and the invocation of sacred space is one way to bring yourself to that. It's not the only way, but it's a really powerful way to bring yourself back into that realization and that connection so that it kind of clears out the gunk in your pipes so you can hear more clearly and you can feel through your body becomes your your psychic vessel to pick up messages from the collective on earth the whole being of earth and also for you specifically and that's how you get in harmony with the planet and right now we kind of need everyone to be harmonizing rather than fighting so that we can actually hear the different perspectives yes but underneath all the perspectives is a truth that's pulsing from the center of the earth, that heartbeat of earth. And so when we get connected with her heart, we get that same heartbeat through us. We remember, oh, we need to clean up the oceans. Now we might disagree about how, 
but we all agree, we need to clean up the oceans. We need to be careful with the whales. I mean, this is what Avatar, the way of water is all about, right? Is bringing awareness to the oceans and to the whales. He's already heard that message. Like this is important. And I heard the message a long time ago too. And so he's responding to that message by making that movie. We all get tapped in. And when you watch a movie like that and you're already tapped in, you really get it. Like you see all the nuances in that movie relate to messages you already got or realizations you already got about how to be as a human on this planet. So it's clear to you. And if you're not tapped in, you go, well, that's a really long, stupid movie. Once you're tapped in, you just kind of all know this. It's like you got the joke and this person's clueless. Let's just say we've all been unconscious. Maybe there's a few people that were just conscious the entire way through their lives. I have met a few of those that were like, they were conscious from the time they were little and they were just like, what is going on this crazy planet? But the rest of us, we chose the unconscious path, right? So all of us have been that, that dude, you know, at some point that was like, what? What are you talking about? You know? <laughs> We've all been that person. So we can kind of laugh at it and just go, well, you'll figure it out eventually. So if it's time for someone, if the medicine wheel calls to someone, yeah, what's the best way that they can start tapping in to that energy? You know, get an invocation. In all of my books, I offer an invocation because I always know that it, when I was starting, it helped me to have a script. And then I would just sit there and read the script out loud because when you first start it, it feels a little awkward. It's like, I'm just going to stand out here on the earth and just like, I'm speaking to thin air. Like you feel weird, you know, like, oh, this is doing anything. So you feel a little awkward. So if you have a little script, you can just read it and face the south and read the thing for the south and then wait and see if you feel anything and then turn to the west. And for a while, you don't really feel anything. You're just kind of doing it. But then the magical mystery store starts, <laughs> it starts to open up, right? I know you know what I'm talking about. And it's like, whoa, this thing is, you know, really real. And so part of the reason it takes a little bit to create it is because this is sacred medicine. So you kind of have to prove that you really mean it. And tension, right? Intention. Yeah. This isn't a fly by night. You know, this isn't a first date, first date booty call. You're really honoring, like, this is Mother Earth. Like, this is the mother of all of us. Whoa, I need to respect this energy, this mother energy. I think maybe I would also say that it's a way of life. It's not a ritual. It's a way of life. For a little while, a lot of people, including myself included, approached it in a transactional way, right? Because I wanted to change my life. I wanted more happiness, you know, a love relationship. I wanted, you know, I wanted things. I wanted stuff. And that'll be humored for a little while as you wake up, right? Like the planet will, uh, will humor you in that. But ultimately, it's not about that. Ultimately, it's really about opening yourself to love and bringing yourself back into the oneness of the Mother Earth consciousness so that you can be guided for the benefit of all using your gifts. Every one of us have important gifts for the planet. Every one of us have important wisdom, brilliance that shines through from the ancestry that we come from. We all have that medicine and that's why I call it inner medicine. And for a little while we forgot we had inner medicine and we thought we were just hungry children asking for a handout, you know, like some cookies from mama. And so for a little while, she'll humor that, like, okay, you're still waking up. I see that you don't really get it yet. Okay, I'll humor that for a little while. And then she'll throw you a little bone or a little nugget over here. And you'll, you know, you'll get like a reason to keep doing it, right? Because you're like, oh, I'm getting stuff I want. So I'll keep doing this. Then it kind of, it's kind of like the law of attraction. Then it's sort of like at some point it starts to flip and it doesn't really work that way anymore. And the reason why is not because you're being bad. It's because that's not really how it works. You were only being humored so that you would do it long enough to make it a ritual for yourself that feels good for you so that you'll keep doing it even if you don't get what you want. And when you keep doing it, even though you're not getting what you want, that's your test of faith. Like you really keep doing it, even though it's not really working out. I mean, we just had this conversation before. Linda and I were like, what is going on with this? Because, you know, we've been at this for a long time, right? But sometimes it's really about deep, deep roots. If anybody's out there feeling that way, like, Really the medicine is 
that bamboo idea, right? So if you visualize that bamboo, we're here for more than just this generation. I'm starting to get, I've got to feel the emotion coming up. <sighs> we're not here. I mean, we're here for ourselves. Yes, we're having a journey, but the ones that came here for this work, we came here for seven generations from now. We came here to lay deep bamboo for seven generations to thrive on this planet. That's, we came here for that mission. And because of that, this life has been a little challenging for many of us. It's been like, dang, will it ever end? It has been hard and it was hard for the first wave too. The first waivers that came through, they really had to bushwhack, you know, to build that foundation. And so we came in as a second wave and we're really backing them up. We're like deepening the roots. We're putting more medicine into the ground. We're putting deeper roots in. We're making a really strong bamboo. So it will serve generations, seven generations from now. And we have sort of feathered the nest of earth for the new earth. And that's what we've been doing. And so, yeah, this lifetime wasn't about like drinking Mai Tais on the beach, although you might've had a little bit of that you know, in the unconscious part and got to enjoy this idea that you were just here for some fun. And then you were like, oh, okay, here comes the work. I love that you have shared the inner medicine wheel with us. It's not just the four directions sent above and below. It correlates to aspects of our inner world as well. So thank you for sharing that today, Carrie. Tell us the name of your book and how we can learn more about your work. Yes, the book is called Inner Medicine. Becoming One with Mother Earth for the Survival of Humanity. And it's like kind of a big title. <laughs> this is the title she wanted me to share. And it's a strong message because we're not out of the woods yet. I mean, this is the timeline we make it and every decision counts. And the more people that really take this seriously into heart and feel the message that I gave today, you know, really commit yourself. This is about the beloved and what can you give away to the beloved on a daily basis from your heart that will make this whole thing just explode with a love bomb? I mean, that's really, we're creating this giant love bomb on the planet. Because if you think about the trajectory we've been on, we need a love bomb right now and, and we change course. So if you wanna be part of a ceremony that our indigenous guide from Peru, Tomas, is gonna be um, doing a, a ceremony, a, honoring ceremony for Mother Earth on Earth Day. I'll record that, that'll be available on the landing page so you can always access it and receive the blessings and add your own prayers for Mother Earth. It's kerryhummingbird.com, K-E-R-R-I, hummingbird.com forward slash inner medicine, all one word. Perfect, thank you so much for being my guest, Carrie. Thank you for having me back. I always love what happens when we get together and the messages come through. Damn, beautiful, beautiful, I do too. Thank you, honey. And thank you for listening to this week's edition of Exploring the Mystical Side of Life. You will find all of our conversations on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Come visit me at thoughtchange.com to learn what energy medicine can do for you. While you're there, check out my program, Alchemy from the Inside Out. That's it for this week. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.